All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. Actually, I've got a lot to talk about today. This is going to be a pretty interesting video, so here we go. First and foremost, the Arnold Classic UK wrapped up yesterday, which was a qualifier for next year's Mr. Olympia. So, so Nathan Diasha won that show, qualifying him for the 2022 Mr. Olympia. He was already qualified for this year's Olympia, which is this coming weekend. And I'll tell you, I was watching the pre-judging yesterday for the Arnold UK, and it was pretty clear to me that Nathan was going to win the show. There wasn't really any, uh, well, actually it was down to both Nathan and Samson Dowda, but this really wasn't the deepest lineup. I don't think this was the best version we saw of either Nathan or Samson. I think Nathan looked a lot sharper. Um, and this could have just been the lighting here at the Arnold UK, but I think he looked a lot sharper at the, uh, Europa Spain where he beat Rolly Winkler. But I think in all likelihood, we're probably not going to see Nathan compete at this year's Olympia, hence why he's trying to qualify for next year. Um, and I believe that has to do with some of his legal issues preventing him from getting a visa to come over here and compete in this year's Olympia. Like I said before, I mean, anybody that's competing in the Olympia at this point that's from another country, if they're not already over here, because the Olympia is, what, six days away? If they're not already over here in the States, in all likelihood, they're probably not doing it. So it looks to me... Like, we're not going to see Nathan in the Olympia. So when I do my Olympia predictions, Nathan likely won't be in them. That's why. I think he's not doing the show. But yeah, that was the result of the Arnold Classic UK, and that is a new name added to the list of the Olympia for next year. So also in the news, another competition that happened this weekend that some of you guys might not have heard about was the Mr. Universe. This was a competition held by the IFBB Elite Pro, which as you guys probably know by now, is kind of the rival organization overseas to the IFBB Pro League, which is what we have here. That's what the Olympia is. That's what the Arnold Classic US is. That's what most of the pro bodybuilders that you're familiar with, that's where they compete. Now, one bodybuilder from that other organization that's been making a pretty big name for himself lately is Michael Crizzo. So not only did Michael compete in this Mr. Universe this weekend, he won the show in a pretty dominant fashion. And a lot of the reason why Michael has gotten so much attention on social media is he's really been challenging and trolling a lot of the guys in the IFBB over here. But one of the things that makes him an interesting character is the fact that while he's doing all this, he's dominating in this other organization. He just won the Arnold Classic Europe, which is different than the Arnold Classic UK. It's an Arnold Classic that falls under the banner um, of the IFBB Elite Pro. So he just won their Arnold Classic. He just won basically their Mr. Olympia, the Mr. Universe. So while he's calling out the guys over here, it's not like he's just sitting around doing nothing. He's over there really crushing his federation. And it, it really is just like one of those things where it's a big what if. What if he did come over here and compete in the IFBB? It's a question that I think we're going to have for a long time, especially after seeing this recent story that he posted where somebody asked him if he had any plans or any intention on coming over to the IFBB. And he responds and says no, or at least not anytime soon. Now, I would imagine, I'll show you guys this picture. I posted this up on my community tab because I thought it was, it was just an interesting looking picture. This is Rafael Santoja, the shorter guy. He is the president. He's the head of that other IFBB. And Michael, obviously, is the giant dude next to him. Now, I would imagine that Rafael Santoja acknowledges and realizes that Michael is like their biggest star. So I'm sure, or at least I would like to assume, that they're taking pretty good care of him over there. I would assume they're paying him pretty well. I'd assume Rafael treats him pretty well. Because if you're the head of that other organization, and this is your biggest star, you do not want him leaving for the other IFBB. So I would imagine they're doing everything they can to keep him happy and keep him there in that IFBB because he's really the biggest star they've got right now. Um, and rightfully so. He is a tremendous bodybuilder. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. How does Michael Crizzo stack up against our current IFBB pros in the pro league? Now, next up in the news, let's talk the Olympia lineup. Let's talk the conqueror. William Bonac. So William Bonac was a guy that a lot of us wanted to see defend his Arnold Classic title in Columbus just, what, a couple weeks ago now. Now, unfortunately, for whatever reason, he wasn't able to travel. He ran into some travel issues getting to the U.S. in time for the Arnold, and he was not able to compete in that competition or defend his title. So he really wants to, I guess, make up for that at the Olympia. He really wants to get some, I guess, retribution for the fact that he wasn't able to compete the Arnold. And really, it is a shame that we didn't get to see him go up against Nick Walker. I've said before, I think they're really similar in a lot of regards. 
And I think that Bonac is a guy that really does bring that finer conditioning and that finer detail, and I think that would have been a really neat comparison with Nick Walker. But we are going to get to see that at the Olympia. But anyway, the point in saying that is this recent caption from William Bonac on one of his recent posts. He says, it seems like everybody is talking about the weather, referring to Big Rami. As forecasts are often misleading, I would rather change the subject over to history. William the I, uh, I don't know what C means. 1028 to 1029, September 1087. I don't really know what any of that means, to be honest. Usually known as William the Conqueror and sometimes William the Bastard was the first Norman monarch of England, reigning from 1066 until his death in 1087. By 1060, following a long struggle to establish his throne, his hold on Normandy was secure. For those of you who don't know, history is destined to repeat itself. Then he says number 17, referring to that would be the number he is if he wins the Mr. Olympia this year. He would be the 17th man to win the Olympia. So look, we saw it with Nick Walker, the self-fulfilling prophecy of winning the New York Pro on the first try, winning the Arnold Classic on the first try. He said he was going to do it, and he did it. Is William Bonac kind of imitating what Nick Walker's doing and putting that energy out there that he's going to win the Olympia and trying to manifest that result? Let me know in the comment section below, do you think there's a chance that William Bonac can win the Olympia this year? Personally, I don't want to influence your guys' comments in the comments, but I'm not predicting Bonac to win this year. But then again, half my predictions are usually wrong, so maybe he'll win. (laughs) Now, next up in the news, Robbie Robinson, still hating on modern bodybuilders. I saw this on Bias and Tries Instagram, so shout out to them for uh, capturing these comments. But Nick Walker put up a post saying, this time next week, I will be center stage. The mutant is coming. And Robbie says, sad. The mutant really needs to go back to the drawing board and come back as a real mutant top to bottom. That's ugly, Nick. No disrespect. Come back with a package that deserves the word mutant. Man, someone needs to take Robbie's phone, man. This man, he's getting too old for this. Look, the way that I'm starting to see things now is we've got classic physique. I've said this before. They made that division so that we can have those aesthetically pleasing physiques that's what that whole division is focused on and i think that division is rapidly growing and i think it's going to become an equal to or greater than men's open bodybuilding eventually down the road honestly i do that division is taking over so the way that i see it now that we have that category men's open bodybuilding not only can be different and doesn't have to be classic like those guys It really needs to differentiate itself. It needs to be different than classic physique. Otherwise, why are there two different divisions? So here's my thing. If you have a guy like Nick Walker, he's massive. He is a mass monster. And he comes in crazy conditioned. He doesn't let his gut, he doesn't come in with a gut that's spilling everywhere, protruding all over the place, the whole bubble gut thing. That's not existent. Conditioning is great. He's got all the size in the world, controls the midsection. His posing is good. He's not all shaky. What more can you ask from a men's open bodybuilder? He's doing everything right, in my opinion, other than apparently the the genetic structure that he has just isn't as pleasing. So what are we really criticizing Nick for? What are we asking Nick to change here? Because really the only thing is his structure. He's doing everything else right. Your job as an open bodybuilder is to be the most muscular guy on stage and the most conditioned, as well as proportion and balance and symmetry and all that good stuff. But Nick was the most muscular on that stage and the most conditioned, and he controlled his midsection. There was no gut. What more can we ask? Like when Robbie says, go back to the drawing board, what does that mean? You want Nick to come back and compete 50 pounds lighter? Because I don't think that's why he's popular. I think he's popular because he is a freak. He is a mutant. And I think most people would acknowledge that. So, I, you know... I'm a guy that's always been a fan of the aesthetically pleasing physiques, but I've really got to defend Nick here because what is he doing wrong? He's doing everything that a men's open bodybuilder should do. He's training hard. He trains with good form. He's putting on size. He's coming in big. He's ripped. He's muscular. His posing is great. I'm reiterating all the same things I just said. What more can you ask from the guy? And he's only 20, what, 26, I think? 25, 26? To be that young and to nail all these aspects of being a pro bodybuilder, why is everyone being so hard on this guy? He's doing, not only is he doing the best he can, he's doing a really damn good job at it. So even though I prefer the more aesthetically pleasing physiques, you're not going to hear me call Nick Walker a frog or a toad or a caveman or whatever all these other people are calling him because he's doing exactly what he needs to do. He's doing his job and there's really nothing to criticize. He's doing it all right. 
Now, next up in the news, I just saw this physique update from Justin Rodriguez, who just took fourth at the 2021 Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. Very impressive placing for Justin. Um, and he's a guy that I think could really do some damage at the Olympia. By the way, every a ton of people have been asking me about my Olympia predictions. They're either going to be tonight or tomorrow. So don't worry. I'm dropping them soon. And Justin will certainly be in those. So he's a guy that I really think could be a he's, he's going to be a threat within the top 10, I think. And this year, I think we've got, what, 19 qualified bodybuilders. Now, that doesn't mean that all 19 are actually going to show up, but there's a lot of guys qualified for this Olympia. I think we know that Phil's out. I think it's safe to say that Nathan's out, so 17. So I think top 10 in this year's lineup is going to be a pretty significant achievement. But yeah, Justin, he looked really impressive at the Arnold Classic. He looks really impressive here, and I think he's going to do pretty well at the Olympia this year. And the final story that I have for you guys today Eddie Hall at the Arnold Classic UK confronting Larry Wheels for a pretty uncomfortable conversation. And to be fair, Larry is the one that posted this on his Instagram. So if you guys don't know, remember that Larry bet $10,000 that Thor would knock out Eddie Hall. So Larry was betting on Eddie in that, or on, yeah, betting on Thor in that fight. Even though him and Eddie were also friends prior to that. So that's what Eddie confronts. Uh, that's what Eddie confronts Larry about. That's kind of a tongue twister. Just have a listen to the video. I was just going to ask you how Thor's balls taste in your mouth. Do they taste good? <laughs> How's the bicep? Bicep's good, man. Is it? Really good, yeah. So when you're little, you're ready for 10 grand to pay up, right? No, I'm ready to take 10 grand off you. That, that, that's what's going to happen, man. It's a real deal. Can I just ask that post you put up with my head decapitated, yeah? What positivity at all whatsoever was aimed towards me when you did that? Can I ask? The positive part yeah. is I want to help you fight. Okay. Get the crowd going. Yeah. Eddie, I work with you in the class. But where was the positivity towards me, considering we were good friends? And where was the positivity towards me? I'm asking you man to man. Where was if, the positivity? If you're going to do that, if you're going to do that without saying it up front, that to me is a kick in the dick, mate. If you took serious offense to it, yeah. I apologize. That's not what I intended. I intended to serve the pot, get some excitement going, make okay. for a big match. I think it's really exciting. All right. And honestly, honestly, I just want the cameras. Okay. If I offended you, I'm sorry. Oh, you did? Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Apology accepted. All right, brother. Carry on sucking force, dick. <laughs> and I'll look forward to taking 10 grand off you. That 10 grand is mine, by it's the way. It's not, mate. Anyway, go with the bicep. See you in a bit. Thank you, man. And that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Like the video if you liked the video. If you enjoyed the video, just make sure you show me. It's cheap. It's easy. It's not cheap. It's free. It helps out a lot. I just really appreciate it when you guys like the video. And we're going to go out today to the sounds of one of my subscribers, Justin Metz, singing an original, Dancing in the Goonlight. Let's see if we get copyright strike for this. <laughs> Nick Strength and Power signing out. Dancing in the good light, everybody's feeling warm and bright. It's such a fine and natural sight, and everybody's dancing in the good light. Dancing in the good light, everybody's feeling warm and bright. Everybody's dancing